you would have noticed when we create a local repository or a local workspace, all these options are disabled of update all, check in all, check out and check out tree. In actual projects, all these options are going to be enabled and we frequently utilize all these options to work efficiently in a project. Welcome to this video where we are going to talk about multi-user workspace, what is SQLite with which we can understand all these processes of checkout, check-in. We'll create a multi-user workspace using the trial license as well as we'll create certain artifacts and see it is coming in another workspace or not. Before moving forward, do like, share and subscribe and share your thoughts in the comment section. Now, what is a multi-user repository or a multi-user workspace? Now, assume that we have two people. One person's name is Ram, who is working from India. And one person's name is John, who is working from United States. Now, when Ram is working on creating certain script modules, any kind of test artifacts, that particular work should be visible to John as well when he is logging in. Or for that matter, if we have more team members located in the same location as well, that is the process it needs to happen so that one person's work can be utilized by another person. Now, that is only possible if we are saving all the artifacts in one particular common location. Now, in case of any project, we will have certain DBs which will be giving us that particular space where we can save that and we'll have a certain server which is created on which all the communications will be happening and we'll be able to see each other's artifacts. But in order to understand it locally, maybe using the trial version, how we can do that. So for that, we have something called as SQLite. If I'll click on create new, you will notice that here we have an option called SQLite. Now, what is SQLite and how it is different from other DBs? Now, in case of other DBs, you have to create a server while in case of SQLite, you can create it without a server in your local workspace and you can check it out. It's a lightweight thing and you can do it in your machine as well, in your local workspace as well. You don't need to create a server. So using this, we are going to create a multi-user repository and we are going to understand all the things around this. Now let's get into how to create a multi-user repository. You select this particular option, SQLite. You remove, remove this particular option, use existing repository because right now we are going to create a repository. Now there'll be a certain location which will be popping up saying task underscore common repositories. That is fine. What I can do is I can create one repository, let's say multi-user workspace and I'll call it as RAM here or maybe, uh, yeah, let's say it as RAM. Okay. You can give whatever name you want, but since this is the first time we are creating, it is going to create this as the common repository. Okay. Now, if I just click on OK, it is going to work exactly the same way how you were creating the workspace in case of local repository. However, there's a difference here. Now, this particular workspace which is created can be connected by other folks to access the artifacts. Now, you will notice that this particular login option was not available when we were doing it using a single user repository because it was clearly understood that one person is creating it locally and that person is going to use. So that's why there was no login credential created. However, since in case of multi-user repository, multiple users are going to log in. That's why we are getting this pop-up. We can set this up to different users, their credentials and things like that. But that is not the part of scope of this video. So we are not going to take a look into that for now. Now here you see, you don't need to give any password. You just need to click on login because by default, it gives a blank password. Now, our multi-user repository has been successfully created. Now, before working into this, let's take a look at what has happened in the background. So if you go to your C drive, let me go to my C drive. Let's stop. My PC and my C drive. Here you will see that you have something called as Tosca projects. If you will open this, you will find three folders, common repository, workspaces and commander. Now, if I go to common repository, whatever name we have given, we'll be able to see that multi-user WS RAM, uh, RAM. If I click on this, 
And if I click on this, you will see that there is a .db file which is created. Now this is the place where all the artifacts are going to get stored and we can connect to this to update as well our uh, own work using another workspace name as well. Now understand that this is just a place where artifacts are getting stored. So if I am creating a common repository, I will have a workspace as well created with the same name. So if I will go to this workspace, you will see multi-user WS RAM has been created and here you will see the uh, this uh, .tws file as well as well as all the other artifacts related to workspace. Now next time when I am creating a workspace using the same location of the multi-user repository, then I am going to only create more workspaces and not the common repository. I hope that is clear. Now let's move to the next task. So here you would notice that there is a green icon which is coming here. Okay. Now why that is happening is because let's say Ram is working on this particular test case and at the same time John also logs into this particular workspace and he creates something. Uh, Ram is working on something and John is trying to update or delete that thing. So he'll get confused as well as he'll not be able to work on his own stuff. So that's why we have a process of checkout and check-in. Now in case of checkout you will see two particular options checkout and checkout tree. I'll explain the difference now. Now if I go to my test cases and let's say if I create three test cases. So I'll say TC001 TC002 and TC003. Now let's say I want to work on TC001. What I can do is I can right click and I'll get this option to check out here and check out tree as well. Now if I click on check out tree, what happens is it basically checks out every element which is inside that every artifact. However, if I just want to work with this, I can just check out this particular element. So whenever we perform a checkout, we have to think about it that do I really need it and it should not stop other folks from working. So whatever is in our scope, only those things we check out. So in case we need to work with all the scripts at once, we can check out the entire tree. Otherwise, we can only check out the artifact what we need to work with. Now the moment I click on check in all, what happens is I have created certain artifacts right now after clicking on checkout. Now this particular thing is existing in my local workspace right now. It is not updated in the repository. Now the moment I click on check in all, what happens is all these three test cases what I have created goes into the common repository and now if someone is trying to access that particular workspace, they will be able to see that I have created these three test cases. Okay. So that is the process and the difference between checkout, check in all and checkout tree. Now what is update all? Now if several people are working on the project at the same time, some people might be updating artifacts and you have not updated, you have logged into your workspace but you have not updated it. So you will not be, you are not accessing the updated version of that particular workspace. But the moment I click on this, any changes what has been done by any user in this particular workspace will be visible to me. So that is the need to use update all. Now we'll understand this particular process that if let's say I check this particular item out and someone else is trying to work on this at the same time, how will it look and what would happen? Now in real case scenarios, whenever you're working, obviously once you're done with your work, you should check in all and you should not close the workspace accordingly, but just to understand, we'll do that. Okay. So I will close this. So see, it will give you the option as well that you should check in all the objects. I'll just click on no for explaining purpose. So now let's say Ram has done all his work and now John joins the team or maybe he has, he's getting started working with this. Now he has to connect to the same repository. So he will use the same option of the DB, what Ram has selected. So in this case, SQLite. Now, it is pointing to the common repository location. We should be good. Otherwise, if you have multiple common repositories created, you can go to the C drive 
and you can go to Tosca projects and see inside this if you have multiple repositories, select the one which you want to work with. So I'll just select this particular option and click on OK. Now, workspace name is individual. So you can create whatever you want. So I can write multi user John here. Okay. And I'll just click on OK. Now, here you will notice you have to select use existing repository. Otherwise, it will create a new common repository. So if I'll click on OK, now what has happened is Ram is creating workspace on his own machine and connecting to the same place. Now in, in real cases, that will be a server which will be either DB2 or uh, MS SQL or Oracle. But for our understanding purposes, we are doing it on the same machine. We are utilizing SQL. Here also you can enter admin and blank password and click on log. <clears throat> now you see when I have created another repository with John's name here, I'm still able to see all the artifacts which Ram has created. Now what I notice here is all three test cases are created. So that means I'm able to access that work. If let's say I want to do update on this particular artifact, you see now we are getting a red icon. Now why that is coming as a red icon? Because this particular artifact is still not checked in by Ram. So I will not be able to access it. So that's why I will not get these options. However, if let's say I want to check out this particular artifact, I can check out. I can click on this checkout or I can right click and I will get this option to check out here. However, if I'll have a tree, if I right click, I'll have both the options enabled here. Now, in this particular case, if John has checked this out. He can do any updates here. So let's create maybe some sample step. I'll put open URL and maybe uh, I will add uh, any any modules from here. I'm not sure why the modules are not populating here. Okay. So I think use workspace template was missing. That's why it is not coming. So I'll just create a folder for understanding purpose. So let me see. John's step. Okay. And I will check in all. Now, if I'll not check in all, this particular changes will not be visible by in Ram's workspace. So I'll click on check in all here. And I will close this. Now, once this is updated, I'll click on multi user workspace Ram right now. And again, I'll log in. And here you see in TC002, if I'll click, I'm not able to see this step. Now, the reason being is Ram has put his work. However, I have not clicked on update all. Now, if I'll click on update all, you see the step is getting populated. So this is required. Update all is basically required to sync your local workspace to the common workspace with whatever artifact is present there. Checkout is something which is used so that you can work in isolation and no one is interfering with your work at the same time. If you are clicking on checkout and you're not checking in, the work is restricted and no one else will be able to access that. However, if you have done like that and you have left the project or you have uh, created another workspace or things like that, that particular item is going to get locked. In those cases, we have to reach out to our Tosca admin and they can revoke the checkout. So that's how we'll get that result in case that particular issue is happening. But as a common practice, you check out and once your work is done, you check in and you do that on a daily basis or more frequent basis so that other people are able to access your work as well as you're able to access all the updates. Now, there could be cases that when you are working on multiple uh, test cases or multiple artifacts, you would have checked out a lot of elements. So check in all will basically check out from wherever, from modules, from test cases, from whichever section you have checked it out, it is going to check on, check in everything. The moment it is checked in, anyone can click on update all and access your artifact. So that pretty much covers the entire aspect of creating and working with mm -hmm. common repositories. And this is how in actual project you are going to work. Thank you very much. If you like this video, do like. <laughs>